So let me start from the beginning. There's this woman named Grace and her name is Grace Waters and she is in jail because she murdered her husband. And uh, so it starts basically from there where she uh, is telling her story, looking crazy, um, uh, telling her story to the public defender. So the public defender um, in the movie, her name was uh, Jasmine, Jasmine Bryant. And um, it was basically her job to go in there and just get her to sign a plea deal. And to be honest, like the plea deal was pretty terrible. Um, she was basically going to spend the rest of her life in jail uh, over killing her husband. Um, and I just felt like the public defender really didn't, in the beginning of the movie, did not fight for her um, as far as like getting the, I guess um, she was trying to get it lower to 15 years. And it was kind of like, no, you're not getting 15 years. And she was like, oh, okay, no 15 years and I'll leave it at that. But anyway, fast forward. Um, she went to the jail to um, interview her and the story is basically told um, f uh, she's basically looking back um, at all the things that have happened so it's pretty much the same story Tyler Perry so it's pretty much the same Tyler Perry type storyline um, of you know a black woman who's searching for love seemed to be pretty desperate looking for love and um, she takes the first thing um, that comes her way which was a you know a pretty attractive like dark skinned guy. Yes, he did have on a bad wig, but nonetheless, he was a good looking you know um, black guy. And I remember watching the movie and feeling like uh, he's a little bit too young for her. Like I don't even understand why she's like you know kind of like interested. Um, and it just seemed too good to be true. So they're basically going out on dates. They're having a great time. Um, he's like super eager to like get upstairs into her, her house and everything like that and she was just very distant. So I should probably let you guys know that Grace was married before and she had a she got a divorce because she caught her husband cheating with the secretary. And um, you know that kind of left her scorn. Uh, so she basically leaned on the church and leaned on her friend Sarah and um, Sarah was trying to get her to start dating again. That she wanted her to get like her life like back on track and you know I, I still felt like Grace like had it going on she had a nice little shape on her booty was like you know uh, plumped and everything like that and um, she her friend just wanted her to get like back out there so she went to this art gallery where she met this guy named Shannon and um, yeah you know I, I kind of felt like Shannon was quite um, intriguing uh, you know good looking and um, you know, if when you originally saw everything, you were like, wow, his photos are really nice and all that kind of stuff. So I was already like invested, right? So as Shannon was giving his um, speech at the art gallery, Grace kind of exits because she feels kind of silly because um, she was basically talking to him like he wasn't the owner of the gallery. And she was saying, oh, you know, the person's name is Shannon. It's a woman and she has a good eye for this. She later turned out to be right that it was a woman. And um, it was actually the woman who jumped off the uh, house at the beginning of the movie. But we'll, we'll get into all of that a little later. So she leaves and he winds up sending her a picture, a photo, uh, to her job with a, a rose, a red rose on top with a note. And so she was going back and forth in her mind whether or not she wants to call. Um, should she call? So she calls her friend Sarah and Sarah's like, girl, you need to call. You know, like kind of, you know, the whole like um, girlfriend talk that you would have with any of your girlfriends. Like she's like, you need to call. She's like supporting her in that and um, finally Grace you know I want to say probably waited a couple of days and then finally called because she didn't want to seem desperate so after she calls um, he was like nope you can't tell me thank you over the phone we got to have a date so they wind up going to a restaurant now yes I agree with everyone's criticism of the restaurant like where did they serve wine at diners and it was some kind of like cheesy like restaurant right so um, Yes, I did notice in the background that the white guy was drinking air and eating air and that was pretty bad and they had a woman who was like basically looking at the camera. Just just a lot of things that was going on but um, I probably would not have noticed it if I didn't watch other reviews um, just because I was already invested in the couple that was sitting there. So, um, so what happened after that? So they're talking, they're laughing, she shares. I, I kind of felt like she shared a little too much on the first date but whatever, it's a movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, they seem to have really 
just hit it off and had a good time so they basically kept going out on dates and then finally you know it really fast forward into them getting married and this is where the twists and the turns start to happen he starts to show his true colors after that and she was just mortified so um she basically goes into work and she's fired because her she she works for like a financial institution and um, her accounts have been hacked and they think that she's the one that stole all of this money from the, the different clients and yeah she, she gets home she's trying to call her husband he's not answering she already had like a little inkling that uh he had been cheating and um when he gets back home she's like blasting him like where were you like i i got fired from my job and he's basically acting like he's concerned and all that other stuff he's basically on the phone calling <laughs> um she's calling the irs he's calling people like I was like, something isn't right here. So um, after that, she is like, she has to do some more investigative work. She found a couple of like addresses. Um, actually, when she went to the bank, the woman was like, is there was some white woman she was talking to? And she's like, oh, you know, we need our money. But um, all of the stuff is going to this address. It was notarized at this particular address. She drove to this house. She saw that it was abandoned. And then after that, she said okay she has to see the footage of you know the bank the basically the bank footage and then that's when she saw that it was her husband who was like behind all of this and when i tell you this guy had some really horrible and terrible things she's sitting in the chair all defeated looking just miserable her hair was a hot mess uh, throughout the entire movie shame on you tyler perry for letting that happen but um what did he say to her that was like oh it really just hurt me he basically said, and this is where she pretty much snapped, and I think I saw myself snapping in that situation too. He basically said that um, she was, um, women her age, women her age are low hanging fruit, um, single, vulnerable, lonely, weak as fuck, um, and that it, this was basically her fault um for the situation that she's in like he she basically owes him that money because of all the sex that they have been having and the the marriage and the good time that she's been having that she owes him all of this money anyway so she basically walks over to the side and she gets a bat and she starts wailing on this guy and there's like blood all over her there's blood everywhere and um she's just in shock that she did this and she just drags him off the, the chair and she throws him down the basement steps and um, she just drives. She just starts driving to the middle of nowhere and she calls her good friend Sarah and tells her what she did. So um, the guards come in and she has to stop her story there. And um, the public defender is like, no, I need more, I need more information. And that's when she drives over to Sarah's house trying to get more information. Sarah basically says that, yes, she went over to the house. Uh, she didn't see a body there, but she did see grace's son leaving the scene and um, this at this point you're basically thinking that the son finished the job or like took the body out because they could not find the body so um they go to trial the lawyer the public defender does a terrible job and her boss roy who's played by tyler perry is like reaming her a whole new one and she I'm just gonna fast forward because I feel like I'm making this video a little too long. This is my first review, by the way, and I'm gonna I'm I'm sure I'll get better at uh, doing some of the some of these types of videos. But anyway, so she gets held in contempt and she is in jail. And her boss comes over and just basically reams her a new one. She was pretty much in over her head. She this was her first case and she did not do well at all. The uh, the I want to say the prosecutors, I think that's what they're called, the prosecutors just ate her for lunch and she didn't really stand a chance. So Grace was found guilty and, um, you know, her husband or boyfriend, was it husband or boyfriend? I think it was the husband basically came to her and said, listen, you need to apologize to the, to the judge and uh, so we can get out of here. So she apologizes and they are in the car driving. She wanted to see Sarah for one last time just to you know check on her to see how everything is going and she runs into the old woman and she the old woman starts sharing some information and then that's when she puts two and two together that sarah is behind all of this 
Um, I should probably mention that in court, as Grace was walking by, she saw a necklace on um, her friend Sarah, and then that's when she was started really putting things together, like how did she get this necklace, and just started putting things together. So that's when she called the lawyer, and she wanted to like um, share with her that she knew that Sarah was behind all of this. So anyway, so Sarah goes to the house. She's speaking to the old lady. And the old, um, the old lady lets out some this uh, information about the address of where she lives. She just wants to go home. And then that's when uh, Jasmine put two and two together that, oh my gosh, Sarah is behind all of this. So um, she hears a, a couple of like thuds downstairs and she goes downstairs to like check it out. And there's all these like women li living downstairs and she's mortified, like could not believe like what what she saw. And then out comes Shannon with like a head bandage and she, he's grabbing her and taking her into some room where he tied her mouth, you know, like tied something into her mouth so she couldn't scream. And um, it was just, it was a lot. So the husband then gets like this alert like on his like computer screen and it says that Sarah's like behind everything. He realized he dropped Sarah, he dropped Jasmine off at Sarah's house. So he's like, you know, racing to get over there. Thank God, thankfully he was smart enough to like call for backup before he went into the house. Like, oh, it was just, it was too much. My heart was just like, oh my God, what's, what's happening? What's, what's happening? And um, so he finally, He's like, let me in. Sarah wouldn't let him in. It was like, you need a warrant. And he, you know, he was still very suspicious. He calls uh, Jasmine's phone. Jasmine's phone starts ringing. He kicks down the door. Girl, it was just, it was just way too much. <laughs> so he kicks down the door. He comes in. Um, he's like looking for for his wife. Where's my wife? Where's my wife? I was so passionate. I was like, oh God, I wish I had a husband who would, you know, if something was, you know, going on with me, would be looking for me like that. Um, so. As he's like, his back is turned, she like busts him on behind the head with a pan. It was just, it was too much. It was just all, just all too much at once. And uh, so he didn't go down. They're, they're tumbling and they're fussing around and he wind up, you know, handcuffing her. And I was like, you know, wait here as if she's really gonna like wait there. He goes downstairs, he finds Sarah, sorry, not Sarah. He goes downstairs and he finds Jasmine in like the room tied up. And then that's when Shannon comes out, they start fighting and he drops his gun. Um, Jasmine is screaming like, oh, my, my, you know, she's like, has the thing in her mouth and she's screaming and everything like that. And, um, she breaks free. She grabs the gun. She shoots Shannon and, um, you know, he dies and, you know, he's helping all the women out of the house and all that kind of stuff. And basically Sarah gets away, you know, Sarah gets away in the movie, um, gets ready to end. And she's, she basically found another like rich family that she's going to wind up scheming and doing terrible things too. That's just kind of what I'm gonna just make the assumption because it kind of ended with her walking into the next like uh, rich family's house who she's gonna like take care of the the uh, woman's mother. So it ends like that. But like, so um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this um, overview because <laughs> I can't even say that this is a review but I hope that you enjoyed this overview of the movie and just what the movie was about. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to really do reviews because uh, I did enjoy watching the movie and then coming here and talking about it. I enjoyed, you know, writing about it and um, just understanding like the whole like plot and what this movie was actually about. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Mwah.